Good evening. I'm Evan Duell, Philanthropy Tank's co-founder and board president. I'm joined by Amy Brand, Philanthropy Tank's chief executive officer, and it's our pleasure to welcome you to Palm Beach County's seventh annual finals event. After two challenging years, we are thrilled to be able to bring our students together to present in person to our philanthropist investors. Next year, we're excited and look forward to gathering for a live event again. Philanthropy Tank began in 2015. Our mission is to equip and empower the next generation of change makers as they identify social issues that confront their local communities and develop sustainable programs and solutions to these issues. To date, over 54 student teams have been awarded over $700,000 to implement their programs and make a meaningful impact in our community. Two thirds of the programs are operating today and one third of our student programs have become their own 501c3 nonprofit organizations. In a few short days, Philanthropy Tank Baltimore will host its second annual finals event, welcoming a new group of student philanthropists, bringing Philanthropy Tank's total number of student programs to nearly 70. We look forward to expanding Philanthropy Tank into other communities as we continue our efforts to develop the next generation of change makers. Of course, we are grateful to all of our sponsors and our annual partners. We also thank our generous investors and mentors, our student grant review committee, our coaches, and our entire philanthropy tank team. And of course, our finalists for their tremendous passion, creativity, and care for our Palm Beach County community. Amy is now going to introduce tonight's program. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Evan. Tonight we join you from the theater at Palm Beach Drama Works. They've been a wonderful partner and we're extremely grateful to Gary Cadwallander, Director of Community Engagement, who has been working with our students to prepare them for this evening's presentations. We're excited for you to hear from our year seven student finalist. It's been a pleasure getting to know all these caring, outstanding individuals. We congratulate them for reaching this stage of the review process. During the show, you'll hear from some of our alumni who will share their progress since launching their programs. Some of our corporate partners will also share why they've invested in our youth change makers. All of our success happens with the leadership, mentorship, and business training our teen change makers receive from our Philanthropy Tank family. After watching our program, we hope you too will be inspired by our students and motivated to make a change in your community. I'm pleased to introduce our philanthropist investors. Aisha Ali is a financial advisor working with high net worth families and individuals, charitable groups, and small businesses. Prior to her current position, Aisha served as Director of International Operations and Marketing for our cosmetics firm and was a successful restaurateur. She is the founding chair of the Young Professionals Board of the American Cancer Society and now serves on the National Associate Board of Ambassadors for the same organization. She also serves on the board of the Pace Center for Girls. We welcome Aisha as a first-time investor. Caroline Cummings Rafferty is a West Palm Beach based interior designer and philanthropist. She's a board member of the Ann Norton Sculptural Garden and the Palm Beach Day Academy. She's the president of the Board of Trustees for the Love Light Foundation, a nonprofit she co founded with her mother and former philanthropist investor, Julie Fisher Cummings. The foundation's mission is to empower at risk women and youth in urban areas. Through her work with the Family Foundation and together with her husband, Caroline has funded more than 15 local arts and culture organizations in Palm Beach County. This is Caroline's first time as a philanthropist investor. For over 20 years, Frances Fisher has dedicated her service to the growth and betterment of the Palm Beach community. She currently serves as chairman of the board and founding chairman of the Gardens Conservancy at the Ann Norton Sculpture Gardens, in addition to other board positions that include Cultural Council of Palm Beach County and the Palm Beach Health Foundation. In honor of Mrs. Fisher's advocacy for women in leadership and dedication to educational advancement for female students, Palm Beach Atlantic University established the Francis Fisher Scholars of Public Policy program in 2014. This is Francis's second year serving as an investor. Unfortunately, 
Frances Fisher is a little bit under the weather this evening, but here to represent her is Vicki Pugh. Vicki is currently partner and co-CEO of Advancement Experts, a consulting firm dedicated to helping organizations build a culture of philanthropy through strategic planning, board development, and fundraising initiatives. She is a faculty member of the Fundraising School of the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy, teaching courses in leadership, major gifts, capital campaigns, and fundraising principles. Vicki is a board member of Philanthropy Tank, the William T. Dwyer High School Foundation, and Holy Spirit Lutheran Church. Tom Vining is a proven global leader, spending three decades successfully managing and growing businesses throughout the world. As a senior executive with Otis Elevator, Tom led several successful turnaround and market expansion situations, executing complex business transformations through organizational redesign and digital technology implementation. Tom was president for Otis Elevator Americas and served as a member of the United Technologies Executive Leadership Group. He also served as a board president for the national elevator industry. Tom retired from Otis Elevator in 2020 and now is performing consulting. He also serves as a member of Philanthropy Tank's Leadership Council. This is Tom's first time serving as a philanthropist investor. I am Alexis Barty, founder of Student Body Health. Since being awarded funding last year, I have been able to provide a multitude of community events based on improving mental health and physical fitness. Our programs have provided outreach for the students of Palm Beach County, the community at the Cox Science Center, and the Aquarium, and the Ann Norton Sculpture Garden. Student Body Health knows that if you've got your health, you've got it all. So we are proud to present our first finalist this evening, Drop the Vape. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tessie, and I'm super excited to talk to you about my project, Drop the Vape. My project is focused on the issue of vaping, which in recent years has become an increasingly dangerous and popular activity for teens nationwide. However, the problem is especially prominent in our state of Florida. In fact, nearly 22% of high school students in our state alone reported that they had vaped marijuana at least once in their lifetime, according to the Florida Youth Substance Abuse Survey that was done in 2020. To put this into perspective, that's about three Hard Rock stadiums filled with high school students. In addition to this, nearly half of the high school students that attend Palm Beach County High Schools reported that they had used an electronic vapor product at least once in their lifetime in the 2019 Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Drop the Vape will aim to decrease the number of teen vape users in our county through three different approaches, education, support, and advocacy. To break down each of those components, I'm going to start with education. Through this approach, we plan to create a teen-based educational course that will inform teens about the health-related dangers that are consequences from vaping at such a young age. We hope that this course will eventually replace the current suspension policy that's in place for students that are caught vaping or vape paraphernalia on campus. In addition to this, we hope to offer a two-way text to quit program that will act as a support mechanism for teens that are already on their journey to quitting vape use. Through this approach, we hope to reach out with a teen on teen approach that will include motivational messages, access to outside resources and local support groups, as well as milestone incentives that will reward students for their hard work on quitting vaping for at least one month, two months, three months, and so on. Finally, through advocacy, we hope to increase the distance between vape shops and schools. The reason for this is that several students in Palm Beach County, including myself, ride to their schools every day and pass at least two to three vape shops on their way. This is one of the reasons why vaping has become so widespread so fast. It's because the access to vape products has become so easy for students in our county. So we hope to connect with a government official who can help us implement a new policy and increase the distance between vape shops and Palm Beach County schools. As for the budget for my project, most expenses are being allocated towards promotional materials that will be needed to market the project into the community. I wanted to emphasize that the text to quit program that we'll be offering is a two-way program, unlike those that are automated and are already in existence. This, in addition to the marketing materials needed for my project, will total at an asking amount of about $9,000. And finally, to address sustainability for my project, I wanted to talk a little bit about Teen Coalition in Action. This is a teen-based 
drug prevention group that I'm currently president of. And our group has already started to recruit new younger members who are already starting to learn our educational course and willing to develop that as well as to create motivational messages for the text to quit program for several more years. In addition to this, TCIA has already established relationships with community partners and gained their commitments to helping us launch the project and continuing to help us reach our goals for several more years into the future. Thank you for your time and consideration and I'll take any questions. Tessie, great presentation. Your, um, your enthusiasm for it is an important topic. Your enthusiasm really comes out. Um, and uh, so I'm impressed by your presentation. Can you tell me a little bit, I think the partnership piece is going to be important to partner with people. Who you've thought about is going to be important to, to partner and get on board as far as achieving some of your goals? Sure. So through TCIA, this is actually a one of the many youth-led organizations that are already um, sort of like branches out of the Palm Beach Behavioral Health Coalition. And this is an overarching organization that has several other youth-based groups with teens that are already um, giving their commitments and expressing their interest in starting to learn our educational course and become a part of this project. Um, in addition to that, the coalition has already established relationships with um, some higher ups in the school district. So they have already started to begin to talk to them and kind of get those connections that we need to start piloting our project in schools over the county. Great presentation and a great subject for you to be addressing. My question is a little bit about the education program. I'm, I just wanted you to clarify, is that already in existence? And if so, how do you scale that up to implement it throughout the school district? Great question. So the educational course is sort of taking pieces from courses that are already in existence. One of the portions of TCIA is delivering courses to schools and even registered nurses, some adults in the community. So we're sort of taking bits and pieces from existing trainings and kind of compiling them into one educational course that kind of sums up all of the most important information and putting it into a different perspective for teens that are caught vaping on campus and sort of trying to implement, starting with some schools, we've begun talks with um, assistant principals as well as guidance counselors um, at Royal Palm Beach High School, at West Boca High School, and we're sort of beginning to be able to pilot that course at different schools in sort of smaller groups to see how successful it is and then hopefully branch out to more schools in the county. Thanks so much, Tessie. One question I have for you is what do you um, anticipate the timeline for getting some of these projects like the Text to Teen program started? Sure. So the Text to Quit program is actually the most um, easy to get up and running and also to get schools on board with promoting. Um, obviously that's what most of the budget and materials that I've included in there are allocated towards. Just because promoting that and getting schools to kind of connect with us should be a pretty quick process. Um, trying to get students to participate and join might be a little bit harder. So we're hoping for at least within maybe the first six months of launching the project, we hope to at least reach um, at least a good number of students so we can start kind of branching out into if that's only at one school, whereas trying to branch out into other high schools and middle schools as well. As for the education and advocacy um, pieces of my project, those are probably a little bit more long term only because it involves like policy changes and kind of connecting with either government officials or officials in the school district. So that might take a little bit longer, um, but we're hoping for this project to last as long as it possibly can and to decrease the number of vape users in our county um, at a, a wide level. I'm Marina Barto of Surface 71. Our organization's mission is to educate the community about water conservation and protection of our beaches. Since being funded in year three, we have organized hundreds of beach cleanups, helped get water refill stations installed in Palm Beach County schools, and provided education and advocacy to our community. Our next finalist is Bridging the Gap. Hi, I'm Sahil. Hi, I'm Cooper. Hi, I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Dua. We're juniors at Dreyfus School of the Arts, and our goal is to decrease education inequity in Palm Beach County. Right now, there are schools in Palm Beach County that don't have access to the most basic school supplies, ranging from pencils to calculators. But when students don't have access to these supplies, we sell them short in the classroom. This education gap sets up students to fail before they're even given a chance to succeed. Across 13 low-income areas in the county, three out of every four kids are entering kindergarten at below average rates. Let's bridge the gap so that no more students are left behind. 
There are two ways in which we will accomplish this goal. First, we'll expand our already established and successful tutoring program. Next, we'll distribute our material supplies to our partner schools. And to do this, we'll work with one elementary and one middle school to first distribute the supplies and then expand from there, which ensures that we reach at least 2,000 students in over 150 classrooms in Palm Beach County. We have five strategies to implement this project. The first is tutoring, which is complemented by material supplies. The next is incentives. We want to implement a student of the month initiative to incentivize academic achievement. We'll also stay in constant contact with the schools we're working with to coordinate our projects. And additionally, we'll use feedback forums so that we're adapting to schools changing supply needs. Finally, we plan to partner with Dreyfus clubs such as the economics and debate teams in order to provide specialized classes for these students. Our budget falls into three main categories, the first of which is incentives. Like I said, we want to incentivize academic achievement. The next is consumables, including pencils and paper. And the final and biggest part of our budget is sustainable supplies to ensure long-term success, including reusable supplies like calculators and long-term class sets like binders. The total budget comes out to $14,820. And as Dua said, our program is operated under a Dreyfus sponsored club called Empowering Youth Action. And with over 90% of our club members being underclassmen, we plan to train them so that they can lead the club even far after we've left Dreyfus. Another way of sustainability is through the program itself. A lot of our supplies are sustainable, as Dua already mentioned. On top of that, a lot of the specialized programs will run past their time with Philanthropy Tank as well. Together, we can bridge the gap for years to come. Thank you, and we're ready for questions. Thank you so much. You all did a wonderful job explaining what you wanted to do. As you mentioned earlier, you've already started the tutoring program. What are some of the lessons that you've learned that you hope to take with you as you continue to grow out the project? Yeah, so we've all tutored so much. We've been doing this tutoring program for years now, and we've had so many students that we've tutored. But I think one of the biggest things I've learned is how much I was able to learn from the tutoring program itself. I've gained so many different experiences from the different students I've tutored. I've gained personal experiences, and I just hope that we're able to give back to our community the same way that they've given us so much knowledge. And if I could add for that, a lot of the like progress and things we've learned on the logistics side is that we have to hope for the best, but at the same time prepare for the worst. We'd account for a lot of things when it came to tutoring, like exam week, maybe not as many tutors are available to begin with. And we had to plan for that logistically ahead. So we just had to make sure we were on top of everything. Wonderful presentation. Um, it's incredible what you've accomplished so far. How many volunteers do you have? So at the club specifically at Dreyfus, we have 40 members and then also the officer board, which is about six to eight people. And then on top of that, our tutoring program is often advertised to other clubs. So if we expand it with the help of Philanthropy Tank, we could always reach out to NHS, which has hundreds of members. So that way we can expand the tutoring program because there's always students that are looking for hours. And have you thought about um, approaching any of like the office supply stores or places like that for donations? We came in contact with a lot of the philanthropists too who offered us some connections with those supply stores and we really hope to expand the ability to truly bridge the gap if given the opportunity. You all talked about sustainable supplies. How would that work? How would you keep track of those so that they can be used over and over again? We have sustainable supplies such as calculators and binders. So the calculators will be functioned as class sets. So they wouldn't be per student as that can be expensive. So they will be used such as also with binders. Binders will be used as class sets as well. Mm -hmm. And then just really quickly to add to that, the entire idea behind the sustainable supplies is that we want not only students, but classrooms to be able to use these supplies for years to come. So like Sahil was saying, the calculators, when students need to prepare for standardized testing, will be able to be used for all those classes that need those calculators. And similarly, binders can be used from middle school to high school, so students are able to ensure their long-term success with the supplies. So you have a lot of good new ideas that you want to add to the program. Is your focus going to be uh, increasing the breadth of the program? Or do you look at it that you want to go to other schools as well to um, expand your program? Is there an emphasis one way or the other? It's definitely going to start with the elementary and the middle school that I was talking about. We've already locked in with Crestwood Middle School and are going to be moving on to Cross Point Elementary School. And once we have a uh, develop further that relationship with those two schools, like you said, branching out to other schools and expanding the program. You did a great job. Congratulations. Good evening. I am Sarah Krasansky, Marketing Coordinator at Philanthropy Tank. 
Throughout tonight's program, you will have the opportunity to engage and send congratulatory messages through our Facebook page. You'll also have a chance to vote for your fan favorite. We invite you to share photos of your watch parties and follow us at our social media handles shown on your screen. Stay tuned for an inspiring program. I am Nesta Flores, co-founder of Little Angels Tutoring. Since being funded in year four, our organization has provided mentoring and tutoring to immigrant children at El Sol in Jupiter. My sister, Adriana, who co-founded the program, is now at The Ohio State University. Together, we continue to provide tutoring to local students. Please welcome Green Garments. Hello everyone, my name is Amelia Williams and my project is called Green Garments. How many of you or someone you know have ever purchased something from a clothing company that produces fast fashion? As the lines between simply fashion and fast fashion begin to blur due to exponentially growing demand, all of us have and it becomes nearly inescapable. What is fast fashion? It is defined as the rapid production of inexpensive clothing by mass market retailers in response to the latest trends. This $35.6 billion industry encompasses many of the major fashion brands, but also contributes to landfill overcrowding, microplastic pollution, the perpetuation of unethical labor practices, and water waste. So what's the difference between fast fashion and green fashion? Fast fashion is often made out of low quality materials that break or tear easily, and which means that the garments that are bought uh, often end up in landfills not long after they are bought. Whereas green fashion means that no new clothing is being produced and students can create a unique and one of a kind wardrobe while being environmentally conscious. So what is green garments? Green Garments is a program that will change the way consumers buy, think, and feel about the clothes they wear. And we aim to do this through our online and in-person store where we will market and showcase garments that students have made and donated to show that secondhand can be the new new and you don't necessarily need to buy something new in order for it to be fashionable. We also do this through education and training at events such as Green Runway and Thread Talks and uh, create a community of like-minded students who have different fashion tastes. Sustaining green garments. Funds raised through our online store will go to buying needed materials, such as shipping equipment, thread, buttons, etc. and all proceeds will be donated to schools in Palm Beach County to give back to the community. And we currently have support from the Environmental Club at school, which I'm the secretary of at Dreyfus, the School Fashion Club, the PTSO, and Principal Blake Bennett. And through this business model, we aim to become 100% self-sustaining after a few years of our launch. Our budget is broken down into four different categories, including machinery, consumables, storage, marketing, and the total that we are asking for is $10,400. Thank you so much for your consideration, and together we can wear green to go green. Thank you so much, Amelia. A question that I have for you, you mentioned having a um, online presence as well as an in-person store. Where do you hope to put that store and what are the goals for that? So uh, Philanthropy Tank has actually um, offered to provide a space um, that uh, we can, you know, get started in. And then once we get our online store, uh, you know, booted up and we start getting, um, you know, uh, funds, we can find a place and we can, uh, you know, pay rent with this money um, that we get through the store. Um, and our online presence, we will use the philanthropy tank money to get a uh, website started and sort of just market on social media and to the school. Where are you going to receive the clothes that you sell? So um, that's actually what we're working on with Philanthropy Tank, like finding a storage space. Um, but we, all the clothes that we get will be donated from you know, parents, students, teachers, um, whoever, and uh, we'll just store them and then sell them back to the community. Wonderful idea and presentation. Is that a dress that you've made? Oh, this dress, I uh, actually thrifted it. Um, it is a Nanette Lepore designer dress that was originally uh, retailed at $400, but I got for $40. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, originally this garment could have been thrown away. Someone didn't want it, but, you know, I saved it from um, going into the landfill and I'm able to create new memories with it, create new outfits. And I'm here presenting this, uh, wearing it to you all now. 
<laughs> Tell me a little bit about your team. You keep referring to we, so I'm assuming there are a few of you that are designing these clothes um, and to resell. And, and about how much is your production capacity right now? So um, when I say we, uh, I, I'm mostly referring to, because this is a solo project, I'm mostly referring to the community that we're going to create. So um, once this program is up and running, I'm hoping to source a lot of my volunteers from the Environmental Club at school, which has over 150 plus members signed up on Google Classroom. So once we get that up and running, we'll really have a team and a group of leaders uh, of students of different ages. So just a, a question on your budget. Um, you know, you said that it would be self-funding after a couple of years. Are you going to need funding before that couple of years, or is this initial budget going to la last you for uh, till that time? So the initial budget is definitely just to get started up, you know, um, get all the needed materials, get a space, and then once we start getting revenue, um, once we start seeing how much our uh, monthly revenue is, then we can really, uh, you know, um, predict when we'll be able to be free of philanthropy tank funding. I'm Talia Gavoni, founder of Steminist. Steminist is a cross between STEM and feminist, providing support for women pursuing a career in the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The Steminist Club has over 125 members who conduct STEM and female empowerment activities with girls in the foster care system. Activities range from magnet-powered cars to cracking geodes to vision boards and mindfulness. I'm hoping to make my program into a nonprofit, and it is my pleasure to introduce Sharing the Arts. Hi, my name is Ave. I'm Nate. I'm Elisa. And I'm Shreya, and we are Sharing the Arts. Sharing the Arts is a program that aims to give access to the Art Choice programs and the greater Palm Beach County Choice application process to Title I middle school students across the county. In the choice program application process, higher income students typically have greater access to resources and guidance regarding these applications in comparison to their lower income peers. During my time at Dreyfus, I quickly came to realize I did not have the same access to tutoring as many of my higher income peers at Dreyfus did. My experience as a low income student in the choice program application process was not unique to myself. The year I applied to Dreyfus, only two students from LC Swain Middle School, a Title I school, ended up applying. This is in contrast to the hundreds of applications Dreyfus receives each year from across the county. In Palm Beach County, 43% of students are considered economically disadvantaged. This is in comparison to only 21% of Dreyfus's student population. In order to combat these low application rates, Sharing the Arts was founded, and our pilot program ran during the 2020 to 2021 school year at LC Swain Middle School. Our program is simple, a three-faceted approach. Our first are art workshops. Starting from their seventh grade year, we will disseminate information about the three art high school choice programs in the county to garner excitement and interest before the start of the fall of their eighth grade year when applications open. Our second is our individual mentoring. With a club of 31 students anchored at Dreyfus, our members will act as mentors for the kids in their respective art areas. They will provide individual mentoring on the art auditions for the art choice applications supplemented by supplies purchased by Sharing the Arts. And our third, our pamphlet on choice programs. In order to fulfill our second goal of education on the greater application process, we provide a condensed, easy to read, two-page pamphlet on all high school choice programs in the county. In fact, I have it right here. As you can see in comparison to the district's 80 plus page packet, ours will be much easier for 13 year olds to comprehend. Our budget is $11,097, which covers the supplies needed for audition mentoring. For example, we are asking for resources like instrument rentals, music and dance lessons, and the professional grade cameras that are used at Dreyfus. In order to ensure the sustainability of our program, we've taken steps and outlined goals that keep a clear direction for sharing the arts in its future years of operation. Nate and I are two underclassmen that will be co-presidents of the club next year and keep the club anchored at Dreyfus for two years guaranteed. We have and will continue to train underclassmen as future mentors and successors of our program. And in order to provide a continued incentive for our mentors, we will provide community service hours to the Dreyfus School of the Arts. Our future goals will keep us aligned with our next step, which include expanding to Bear Lakes Middle School by 2023 and continuing our active work with the school board and school district to promote our initiative. With your help, we can end artistic educational inequality. Thank you for your time and do you have any questions? Thank you all so much, that was incredible. Um, I, I'm so grateful that you, you've been doing this work already. And I, I guess one of my questions is, um, what have you learned from the work that you've done so far? And sort of have you, what are the takeaways from that? And are you making any changes moving forward? And I think 
Um, the other question I would have for you is how you would execute sort of the mentoring aspect of the program. What we've really learned from this is that despite low application rates from these middle schools, there is a significant interest. Um, a lot of times students just don't realize that they have the opportunities they do as a result of the lack of equity and the amount of information being dispersed. Um, so that is like why we have started and continue to do what we do. That's that's one of the biggest takeaways that we've gotten from it because, you know, it may seem like students from these middle schools may not be as interested as other students, but in reality, they really are. There's so much engagement that we get when we work with these middle schools. Um, so that is one of the greatest things we've learned. But as far as our mentoring, I think Nate can answer that question because he did mentor one of our students um, during the last, um, during our pilot program. Sure. Um, so last year I joined the club as a freshman and I was interested in mentoring uh, one of the students and they put me in touch with an eighth grade student at uh, Elsie Swain, uh, a French horn player, uh, which I am also a Dreyfus. And uh, so they set me up. I did a Zoom lesson with them and really just told them everything about the audition from the technical part the, and the mus musical part and also pretty much just everything that they would need to know. And I think it really had a big impact on him. And um, now they're a very valued member of the Dreyfus Band. So I was happy to do that. That's wonderful. And I have a question. I see that pamphlet you're holding, Nate. Um, how are you able to distribute that to the students that would most benefit from getting that copy? I can actually take that. Um, so what we're doing right now, we're working with the school board, um, about five members, including Alexandria Ayala, who is a direct member for the education part of the school board. And we're working with them to dis disseminate this pamphlet to all middle schools. Um, across the county. And so that is a work in progress, but with Philanthropy Tank's help and mentoring and funding, we're hoping that we can expand that to um, and ex disseminate that quicker. I'm curious your reception from the, the middle school that you're working with, uh, the administration, are they receptive and are they helping you um, in, in this project? As a result of going to LC Sway Middle School, I did know a lot of the staff that work there. Um, we are working directly with the AVID program, the band director, the art teacher, and the principal of the middle school. Um, and each time that we like begin to like look into reaching out to other middle schools, we are working directly with um, the principals, the assistant principals, to make sure that we have like more of a direct connection rather than just like specific students. Um, that way we have a greater reach. I'm Sam Friedman, founder of Year 5 program, South Florida Tech for Seniors. Our nonprofit organization pairs student volunteers with senior citizens to provide free technology assistance and education. Since being awarded funding through Philanthropy Tank, we have partnered with Morse Life and the Mandel Public Library to host events. We have worked with hundreds of students from across Palm Beach County to engage in over 1,000 one-on-one support sessions. Our final presentation of the night is from Nome. Good evening, everybody. I'm Alyssa. I'm Elise. I'm Anna. I'm Mallory, and we are Team Gnome, which stands for Growing Native Oases Made for Engagement. And we aim to make community gardening and environmental education more accessible to underserved areas of Palm Beach County. Our goal is to provide the necessary resources to promote a connection to nature and the environment. To accomplish this goal, we plan to establish five community gardens and hold three environmental education events in our first year of operation. The need for community gardening is present in both humanity and the environment we inhabit. Studies completed at Carnegie Mellon show there is a direct correlation between lower socioeconomic status and higher stress levels. Community gardening would allow people to connect to nature, which not only decreases these stress levels, but could inspire a new generation of scientists. From an environmental perspective, the Florida Department of Agriculture reports that over 500 native plant species are endangered or threatened in Florida alone. This is more than 20% of all Florida native plant species. Planting these species would help support their population growth and promote biodiversity in Palm Beach County. Our community gardening events will take place about once every two months. Volunteers of all ages would come from FAU High School, community outreach, and advertising from our partners. Our environmental education events will include guest speakers from our community partners, such as Dagger Wing Nature Center and Send Away Discovery Center. An example would be how to start your own garden at home. Our locations for these events will take place in low budget or underserved areas of Palm Beach County. 
We are already working with local leaders to confirm these project sites. We spoke to Adrian Tynes with Community Greening, representatives from Habitat of Humanity, and Autumn Coyote with Audubon Everglades. Our asking budget is $10,415. All of the funding will go into the creation of our community gardens. The plants and equipment used to create these gardens will be purchased from local nurseries and businesses. A small portion of the budget will also be allocated for food and drink for volunteers during the community garden events. To keep NOM active, we plan to establish a network of clubs in Palm Beach County schools. FAU High School would act as the base of operations to train new volunteers, and future officers will be elected once you graduate. The support and funding necessary to keep NOM running will be donated by our various partners and members of the community. With your help, Gnome can provide the resources to Palm Beach County that make gardening all-inclusive, benefiting both humanity and the environment we inhabit. Thank you so much for your time, and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Great job, and a really great project, very unique. Um, here's my question. I actually always usually ask two, so I'm going to ask two questions. First one is, what kinds of plants will be in these gardens? And then the second question is really important, and how, how are these gardens going to be maintained over time to be beautiful and be these respite areas for people to visit? Yeah, so for the first part of that question, we really want to focus on native plant species um, that are host or nectaring plants to butterflies and other insects. We're not really focusing on vegetable gardens because we found that they require higher maintenance, which I'll also go into. So we really want to focus on butterfly gardens in our first year for sure. We're looking into creating butterfly gardens next to vegetable gardens, and that would provide assistance for the vegetable gardens, but we would really just focus on that butterfly uh, garden aspect. Now the second part for maintenance, in between gardening events, we plan to send like a dozen volunteers or so to go and help maintain the garden. It's really the first few weeks of that garden, especially since these are native plants, which is the most important time period, those first few weeks. So once the plants have kind of settled in in those first few weeks, um, the only maintenance will be watering, which is not that difficult to, <laughs> yeah. Wonderful job. Um, how are you going to find the locations and get community buy-in for the project in the locations where you're going to put them? Because it has to be embraced, I think, by the community. Mm -hmm. So we're already looking at a couple of locations, one in Boynton Beach and one in Delray, I believe. And we really found these locations because of our community partner, Community Greening because they already have kind of a presence there in terms of already set up natural areas for the community. So we would go and assist in adding on to those locations. So those locations are already established, so actually finding them wouldn't be the difficult part. You mentioned that you wanted to expand the program to other schools and use um, FAU High School as the base. How are you going to get the word out to these other schools? I would think the easiest answer to that would be friends at other schools, and then they could reach out to uh, possible coordinators of the club. We could also reach out directly to staff members of the schools, I would think. In your last slide, you talked about donation from partners. Do you have specific partners you think that'll help with the donations to keep this program going? So the donations in there that we're really thinking about are like plant and soil donations that could maybe alleviate the cost of some of these gardens. For example, Daggerwing Nature Center, um, they have a nursery set up, and maybe before our garden events, we could go and get some plant donations. So that was part of what we were thinking in terms of that donation aspect. Great program, thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jonathan Klein from Year One's Bricks Busting Board. Bricks Busting Boredom donates new and used Legos to children's hospitals, emergency shelters, foster homes, and homeless shelters. I run Bricks Busting Boredom along with my brother Daniel and my sister Sarah, who are both in Gainesville, attending the University of Florida. To date, we have collected and donated two tons of Legos. Our philanthropist investors are now deliberating over who's going to be awarded funding and mentoring. While you cheer on our student finalists, we're asking for your support to continue empowering young leaders like those you are seeing during our program. Please text to the number on your screen. You'll have the opportunity to make a donation and help support the Philanthropy Tank mission of empowering our next round of change makers. We thank you in advance for your donation. What we love about Philanthropy Tank is our investment is in that future change maker, but also in the sustainability for the future. It's great for companies to get behind and support a local organization and to see it improve our local community. And I strongly encourage any business to get behind Philanthropy Tank. is a 
a sponsor for Philanthropy Tank um, nationally, and we get involved with the community um, to assist uh, you know, the students in the diverse communities to be able to help them succeed and to further develop. I just think it's exciting to be able to invest in these young leaders. They're finding, you know, ideas and most importantly, solutions to pressing community problems. Part of the firm's culture is stewardship and mentoring and all that stuff and kind of what drives the mission of Philanthropy Tank, which is you know, how to better our community, how to mentor the future youth and professionals in the business community. And I think it just fits hand in hand. to become an annual partner, we really thought that it was exciting to see over the past seven years just the impact that's been made in our community. We're now ready to hear tonight's results from our philanthropist investors. We'd like to bring Drop the Bake to the stage, please. So Tessie, you did a great job. We're excited about your project. And I would like to be your mentor and fund you for $7,000. So thank you very much. We have more money to give you, Tessie. And I would like to fund your project because it's so great and so needed with a $1,500 gift. Wonderful job. And I would like to contribute $500. So that, that's the, uh, that's for $9,000 total, and uh, you know, I think you'll be great, and so congratulations. We'd like to bring up the Bridging the Gap team, please. You all did such a wonderful job this evening with a great presentation and a lot of potential to help change the way that young students in Palm Beach County get to work. I am so pleased to be your mentor and I would like to offer you $5,500 towards your goal. Wonderful job and a great cause. Um, I would like to contribute $2,000. And I would like to contribute another $1,000. Great job. Thanks. And I will round it out with $1,500. So we'll be funding you for $10,000. And we'd like to bring up green garments. Amelia, the work that you're looking to present on really will help not only impact students, but the environment. And so I'm very happy to be your mentor and offer you $6,500. Wonderful job. I'd like to give you $1,500. And I also would like to give you $1,500. Congratulations. Amelia, I'm so impressed with your project and I would like to give you $1,000. So we'll be presenting you with $10,500. Let's bring Sharon the Arts up. The project you presented was incredible. You're covering so many things, and I would love to be your mentor and fund you with $8,000. Great, and I would like to contribute another $1,000. I was really excited about your project. And I would like to contribute $1,250. I would also like to contribute $750. So we're presenting you with a check for $11,000. And we would like to bring up Gnome. 
We were so impressed with your project. Um, you all did a wonderful job with your presentation, but we really love the idea of these gardens and the way that you want to sustain the environment. And I'm here on behalf of Frances Fisher, so she's going to be your mentor. So you will enjoy meeting her. But in the meantime, on her behalf, I get to award you $7,500 for your project. And I would like to contribute another $2,000 to the project. And I would like to give you $1,000. So your total project funding is $10,500. I am Corey Murphy, Program Director at Philanthropy Tank. We are pleased to announce that our application will open in May. If you are a change maker or know of a student candidate, we encourage you to contact us at philanthropytank.org for more information. congratulate all of our wonderful students for their presentations. They've done an excellent job. So can we get another round of applause from everyone? And I'd like to thank our wonderful philanthropist investors for being a part of this and making these programs possible. So thanks to you all as well. I'd like to thank our team and the many, many people behind the scenes that made this event possible. And thank you all for joining us and helping us to empower our next round of change makers.